If someone approaches you offering to help with your music, you might actually unknowingly be giving away the exclusive rights to your music. We'll cover all that in this video. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. That's right. For the record, you ain't trying to grow any stuff for you. That's right. For the record, lab on me going all the way. For the record, ain't trying to link no time to wait. For the record. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan Vatsek, your virtual artist development coach. Today we're gonna to be talking about exclusive rights and specifically how you might accidentally lose your rights if you work with a producer or you work with an independent label or a publisher. So we'll talk about all of that so that you're in the know in how to manage and navigate the music industry because what I believe is that you know, knowledge is 90% of the reason that artists struggle in the music industry. And if we can just take care of the knowledge aspect of understanding the industry that we exist in, we can better navigate the waters and create more successful careers for ourselves. So I just wanna do a quick plug. If you want to grow a bigger fan base and grow a successful music career that actually earns an income so that you can invest and expand and tour and share your music, I want you to check out my website, the Indie Music Academy. I'll link it below. It's just indiemusicacademy.com and join one of our trainings. Uh, just check it out, it's completely no obligation, so I'll leave that link in the description below for you to watch and view for yourself. So, let's dive right in to the topic of this video, exclusive rights. First, what is exclusive rights? The answer to that is a little complicated because first we have to talk about the different types of copyright for a song. The first type is the sound recording most commonly called a master or a master recording. That's when you go into the studio and record a physical song that's either streamed or pressed to a disc or vinyl and then sold. So that is one piece of the song that is copyrightable, the actual sound recording. On the other hand, the same exact song has another copyright in addition to that, and that is the song itself. It's the song writing, it's the lyrics and the melody. That has a separate copyright to it because it has separate artistic merit. With a sound recording, you have the instrumentation, you have the vocal performance, you have the producing, all of that, the mixing and the mastering. And then on the other hand, you have you know, crafting the lyrics and the melody that is so intricately written. Or if you're a hip hop artist, it's the allegories that you use and the wordplay. That is all a different artistry that is copyrightable separately. So when we talk about exclusive rights, we're actually talking about the lyrics and melody part of exclusive rights. Because as you know, if you've been following the Taylor Swift, Scooter Braun, uh, I don't know if it's a scandal or just an argument, but Scooter Braun bought all of Taylor Swift's masters, the sound recordings, but since she's the songwriter, she can always go back and re-record another sound recording and she will own that, even though Scooter Braun bought all of her existing sound recordings that were made under Big Machine Records. Just know that they're different. Exclusive rights for the song ownership itself can be given away on accident, especially if you work with a producer you work with a record label or you sign some kind of publishing administration or some kind of publishing deal. Exclusive rights is basically ownership and control of your song. It could be permanent or temporary, but it's ownership and control. For example, if you sign with a record label, they will fund the sound recording of your song. That's part of their job. It's how they invest in artists. They take care of the bill, but they'll own the sound recording because they paid for it. But then, you have to check these contracts because in addition, they might actually own the publishing of the songs too, which is complete ownership of both sides of the copyright of your song. So the label paid for the recording, but in the contract, you're also signing away exclusive rights to the song. That means you actually cannot re-record those songs later. You cannot make your own master recording later they own the song in its entirety. Now, it might be forever or it might be temporary, that depends on your contract, but I want you to watch out for that because that's something that labels are doing now because it's hard to make money as a record label. So they are 
investing in artists, but also asking for a little more in return nowadays. Here's another scenario. Let's say that you're working with a producer who might have a setup kind of like this, and they're working with you to create a finished song, a finished recorded song they might actually ask for a cut of that song. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't really mean just getting a cut of what you make from DistroKid from streaming. That is just one side of the story. What actually might happen is the producer might ask for a cut of the songwriting as a producer credit, which means they actually own part of the song itself and they're hoping to get paid back in the future on the back end from that song's success on the publishing side. There's a side effect to that because if there are two songwriters on a song, that means there are two people that you need to get permission from in order to use the song. So just keep that in mind. You might unknowingly be giving away your rights. It's not exclusive to you anymore. It's shared between two rights holders now. And here's a third example that sneaks up on a lot of artists, especially hip hop artists, is that if you get a beat online from these beat leasing websites, you are actually not making a product or a song, but let's just call it a product, right? You're not making a product that is 100% completely yours if you just lease a beat. Now, let me just clarify, there are ways out there to completely own exclusive rights to a beat that you buy online. But most of the time you're short on cash and you opt in for the cheaper option, which is a beat lease, which is a non-exclusive license, which means you always need to give credit to the beat maker as a songwriter on your song. You're not buying them out, you're just getting a license to use. And just because you have a license doesn't mean that they don't get credit anymore and they don't get royalties anymore. So that is another one that sneaks up, especially on hip hop artists, because you buy 10 beats and you think you have an album that you completely own, but when you go into BMI to register, you realize that because of the contract and the user agreements on these beat websites, you actually can't put 100% in the songwriter's portion because you don't own 100% of the song, you're most likely gonna have to split that 50-50 with the beat maker. So what are some takeaways from all this? One is if you can get a work for hire agreement in place, that's the best way to go if you wanna own your music entirely. Now work for hire agreement basically is a contract that says you did this work and I paid you this much, now I own this art. And so it's very straightforward. And I actually have a free work for hire agreement for you guys. If you feel like you need one, I'm gonna put a link in the description below to a free work for hire agreement for you so that you can use it when you're trying to create your own original music and you wanna own it entirely. Another takeaway that I just wanna make sure that you understand is that complete ownership isn't the end all be all. It might actually be a good thing to give away ownership if it's gonna level up your career. So I don't wanna give the impression that you know, owning your music 100% is always the right thing to do. You know, sometimes it's good to collaborate, sometimes it's good to work with a label even though they are taking, you know, some of your publishing. Sometimes it's good to work with a producer that'll level up your music and sometimes it's good to work with a publishing company that's gonna put your music into places that it wouldn't be able to be otherwise. One of my core philosophies is that if you know more about the music industry, you will be more successful because you're able to navigate the waters better and you're able to create more success for yourself. That's why I created the Indie Music Academy. It's my new website where I teach about the music industry and you can actually sign up for access to one of our trainings. I highly recommend it because it'll help you create a foundation for your music career and help you build up your music career from scratch the right way so that if you do find success, you won't fall into some of the mistakes and traps that artists are falling into just because they don't know how the music industry works. So you're already doing the right thing by watching this video on the channel. Feel free to subscribe, and if this video was helpful for you, hit that like button because it saves it so that you can reference it back in the future. And drop a comment if you have any specific questions of your own, and I'd love to answer them in a future video. So once again, thanks for watching. My name is Ryan, and check out IndieMusicAcademy.com. I know you won't regret it, and I'll see you guys on the next video.